You cannot hear me because my mic was muted. That would do it. I forgot to unmute myself. Uh, th thanks for letting me know, Chantilly. Hmm. That's, this is fairly disconcerting. Able to run forward and see animation. Yeah, I don't think. I want to say that I, when was the last time that I, that I tested this? On, on the actual Pi or on like um, a Linux system. Um, let's see. Let's go find let's go find a better patch to try. So we go off of main. So moving the player. All right, so if we begin right away, like zero eight, so let's try this. Hit. Check out zero eight nine three a three. I mean, so even that's not working. If I do like. Uh, Initial commit, we don't have anything there. Reading the plan. That that should at least show something. So get check out E five Oh, we don't even have a cargo tomal yet. Oh, we do. We should have a cargo tomal there. Oh, because we're still doing the demo stuff. So, wasm. Yeah, so if this isn't working. Um, hello, Danny Fritz. This is not the Raspberry Pi. This is my my desktop. Now I have a Raspberry Pi. I do have a Raspberry Pi here, uh, and I can reconnect it back in. But if you want to see, I have my my notebook right over here that I'm. That's what you're seeing. And unfortunately. Uh, we're getting these errors. Now I'm wondering if actually the problem is that I need to. It's like I know thing. I was able to get the the player to move move back and forth, or at least move to the right. So I think I think this one was working for me. Five A. So get check out five A F. 6A1. Let's do a cargo run. I, I wonder if I have to do a cargo clean also. So let's try that. Cargo clean. Cargo run and recompile this. And if this works, then we'll we'll try that. We'll try that again. Um yeah, most likely I think I am. Wayland is the um, the X11, right? The X11 setup, or is that? You wouldn't ex expect to see X11 errors, yeah. Except that's what we're seeing, which is which is odd. I have not had this problem before. Wait, 
Wayland is a replacement for X11. Yeah, it's possible we're using Wayland. Yeah, okay, so here... Okay, so this is back to the resource not found. Um, all right, so we need to CD into target debug, move directory resources. So thread main panic that attempted to leave type platform platform x11 util input pointer state uninitialized, which is invalid. You know, this happened after I updated Rust. Could it be an updated Rust problem? Cause this is this is pretty bad. Is there, uh, let's see, is there a way to like very like specify like exactly what version of Rust to use as opposed to just like the latest version, um, and like maybe one one step back on stable. Take a look. Rest up. So I can show um, we ran update. We ran update before. So I've got stable x86 64 Rusty 1480. People say reverting to Rust 1.47 fixes it. Oh, okay, so that's our problem. Uh, can I do that with? Is that Rust up toolchain? Hmm. Rust up toolchain. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could do channel, stable, and then the version. Oh, no, that's or version. Okay. So I can do rest up, tool chain 1.47.0. Uh, install. Okay, um, and then I need to set that to be used. Uh, rest up. I'm gonna set which one's active. Okay, so I have 147. Oh, set the default tool chain. So I can do default 1.47. Okay. Press up default 1.47. Zero. Okay. Then let's do a cargo run. Hmm. 
Now, remember, we're way back in the past. This is not going to be the current game. But if it runs, that's a really good sign. And this, if that's true, this is going to be the first time that we've run an update and had a uh, had a major problem with with uh, stable rust. Apparently, this is a Winit issue that has been fixed in Winit and GGEZ development branch. Oh, okay. See, here we go. Okay, so you're working there. All right, well, since we want to like actually test this on the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to take you off. Oh, sorry for blinding you. Back to you while I plug the Raspberry Pi back in. Try switching back over to you. Okay, so here's the Raspberry Pi. Now I have like two compute two two keyboards, two mice. It's all it's all fun. Okay, so uh, we want to do a rest up. Um, I need to increase the brightness on this display. Okay, now I can actually see what's going on. Um, all right, so rest up, install 1.47. Um, oh, that's zero. So I have a, as we can see here, I guess I'll just, since Zilby is not here, I'll just show Not sure the best way to like display our um the raspberry pi here i need to also untie my my controller uh now that i have the the capture card stuff we'll be able to actually test this for each feature um on the pi which is going to be really good so if in case like things like this happen uh we'll catch them right away uh, especially if it's our code that causes a problem So I've got the controller there. Let's put you down here. And camera, you can you can look at the pie. It's, not, it's kind of boring. There's no flashing lights or anything. Um, okay, so we did that. Then it's gonna be. Messed up. Uh, tool. Is it rest up tool chain default? Just default. One dot forty seven dot zero. Okay, and then um, let's do it status okay we're up to date with main so we're on the latest branch and then we'll do a cargo um run. i think i've been doing um release mode so this might actually be faster because i think i've already pre-compiled it yeah there we go okay so we've got uh our player here be able to move. Um, I am using the full Nintendo controller for this. Oh man, look at that speed of the animation. Also, pressing left isn't doing anything on my controller. I can only move right. But moving across the scenes, that seems to be working just fine. Uh, I'm actually curious what my, um, like, can I alt tab out? I can.
Is it a... Where's my mouse? There you are. Tabs. Give me a new tab. Oh, no, it just names tab. Give me a new tab. Oh, you let uh, the GGZ dev know about Rust C 1.48 and he wasn't aware of it. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Danny. Ice Foxen is a uh, is a pretty awesome guy, so I'm I'm sure he'll be like he'll he'll fix that really quickly, especially if there's a fix already uh, there. Um, okay, so we have that. Then I want to can I make this bigger? Yeah. Uh, I want to run top. So the game is running behind the scenes. Uh, we see memory percentage 6.9, so that's not very much. CPU is 375, 374% out of. What's our It's been forever since I've used top. What's the What's my um percent CPU left? Is that 95.1? Hmm. I mean, it doesn't feel like it should be that crazy usage, like that slow, based upon what I'm seeing here. Uh, is there a better... Oh, there's probably not gonna be any better um better system for me to to see what's going on there's diagnostics task manager uh i'm gonna hide this screen just in oh wait hide that screen i need to <laughs> obs is the only way for me to see this right now okay so i want to go to task manager Are you showing anything secrets? No, you're not. Okay. It showed jungle at over 300% CPU and we can see here jungle is 94% CPU, which is at 96% overall CPU usage. And memory is not very much. So memory is not our problem. It's our CPU that's the problem. So we need to, to cut down on our um, our CPU usage. Uh, what I'm thinking of, can you choose a target FPS? Yes, I can. And I am doing that. So if we... Um, I'm maxing all the cores somehow. Yes, I am. Uh, which is fun. So if we take if we take a look at where what we're doing here in my main loop, we're limiting ourselves to thirty frames per second on the update loop. But what we're having problems with is the uh, I think it's going to the graphics loop is is really like. Uh, it is going as fast as it can. So we, we're going to need to slow that down. Um, Safrini, uh, hello, is it? Yeah, good morning. It's still morning for me. Uh, what is the stream about? We are making a, a Pitfall clone in Rust and GGEZ. And uh, it's actually going to be a gift for my father. And I'm planning on putting it onto a Raspberry Pi and sending it to him. Sort of like a, a mini, like, you know, homemade console. It's only going to have one game. But... Uh, we're testing it on the Raspberry Pi, 
and uh, we're getting 95% CPU usage. Uh, I have the Raspberry Pi. I got this one a long time ago. Can I actually see? Does it show on the board what it, which one it is? I think it's the three. I think it's the Raspberry Pi 3, but how do I, okay. Ah, sorry about that. Um, oh, you love Rust and Embedded. Um, oh, that's that's great. Let's see. Yes, okay, it is the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, I think it's the 3B model. Um, I do not have NeoFetch installed. So I wonder, well, so other, other, but okay. So right now, um, we are limiting our frames per second on the update to 30 frames per second. However, our draw does no such limiting. And that, that's our problem, I think. I think this is a problem. Because if we're drawing at 30 frames per second, but no, if we're updating at 30 frames per second, yes, that helps the CPU, but there's no graphics card on these Raspberry Pis. It's all integrated graphics. So it's gonna use the CPU to draw out. And if I'm um, if I'm running this, the, the draw loop as, as fast as possible, it's gonna use every little bit of CPU. So I probably need to uh, to sleep ourselves uh, for the draw too. Um, Danny, what is NeoFetch? CPU and GPU usage should, should be separate? I would think so, but with a Raspberry Pi, is that true? I, I'm I'm very unfamiliar with Raspberry Pi architecture, so I don't know, like, if it's an integrated graphic, like, is there even integrated graphics, or is it just CPU? NeoFetch is a command line tool that just tells you information about your computer and draws out a distro ASCII image. Oh, uh, I have no idea if I've got that installed. Let me let me check. Is there anything that I need to be worried about it showing? Like, do I have to, do I have to make it secret? Shouldn't have to keep it secret. Okay, perfect. Uh, so first of all, do I have it? Um, it's common to include in screenshots. Okay, awesome. So Neo. All right, uh, can I get that through apt? So sudo apt update. So one of the things I was uh, considering about was, and I, I just built, um, I, I have another micro uh, SD chip um, and so I, I put on Ubuntu onto this because I, I mean, Raspbian is based on Ubuntu. And so this is a 64 bit operating system as opposed to a 32 bit operating system here. All right. So can I do a sudo apt install Neo, what did you call it? Neo fetch? Yes, I can. Ahead and install that. Um, have you set VSync on? I have not set VSync on. I've been 
Yeah, I, I don't have VSync on. Uh, we can turn that on and, and play around with that and see if that makes it work any better. That actually might help a lot. Okay, so I've got you there. Let's try our um, Neo Fetch. Okay, yeah, so it's the Raspberry Pi Model 3. Twelve eighty by seven twenty. Okay. Twelve eighty by seven twenty. Um, is that like also is my capture card not not helping out here? Resolution. Okay, let's try that again. Now that's the same. BCM two eight three five has an integrated GPU. Oh, is that what I have? A B. Oh, CPU. Okay, so that CPU has oh, it has four cores with an integrated GPU. Okay, that's good to know. Is that Molly? Man, there's so much about integrated that I have no, I have no clue. There's no reason the Raspberry Pi three couldn't run this standing on its head. Yeah, so. Um, let's see, let's do, let's do a test branch. Switch over here. Let's do a test branch. Um, testing, uh, vsync. So let's head over to main. Right, it's actually not here. It's now in initialize. So in initialize, we're setting our dimensions of full screen. I think it's in window mode or it might be setup. I think it's in setup. I think it's in window setup. Let's try that. Uh, window setup. Gotta love that new new thing. Okay, so let's start with default. That you're not gonna fine. I wish I could specify which browser. Oh, that's gonna. Is it gonna fail? I don't think I saved it with the error, so I think it should work. Um, I wish there was a way to specify which browser to open up the documentation in, because I generally want what one browser for just like controlling the stream and like having that information, and the other browser for like actually showing on stream. But my default browser is the other ones. That way, when things open up, it opens up over there. So that way, I, I can like verify it's actually good before I show it on stream. Here's our, here's our Raspberry Pi. Should 
trying not to have the camera fall off the ledge that it's precariously posted on. Yeah, so I, I bet you're right. I bet that we want to turn on VSync Utsby. And hopefully, hopefully that should limit our graphics loops and, and slow things down enough for it to work nicely. The the problem with VSync is I don't know what what resolu like what the um the FPS I'm going to get with my father's TV. All right, so let's go take a look at window config. Config, right? GG Easy Config. Oh, does TV not be 60 hertz? I mean, I don't know. I guess it would be, but. Oh, it's comp. So comp, window setup. Okay, so window setup, it implements the traits. Default, okay, so default, and then vsync is, okay, uh, function just vsync, and it true. Okay, so dot vsync. Uh, do I need to build it or anything? I think it should be good. And then we're going to hand it a context builder. So window mode dot window setup and hand it window setup. Okay, so then if I cargo run. Okay, so this is this is still working here. All right, so if that's let's go ahead and get this saved and pushed up. Uh, let's see, we have six warnings. How did I add warnings to it? Um. Oh, that's in that's in my other thing. Oh man, come on! Don't show me. Don't show me warnings from other workspaces. Come on. All right, so we're in testing VSync. We'll sync you. I'm out. VSync. We'll push you up. And then that went up. Well, oh, you know what? I Now that I have multiple screens, I just completely forgot that I wasn't on the main screen. You've just been staring at this the entire time. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I need to now remember to go back and forth between the scenes. Um, okay, so Raspberry Pi uh, scene, we're, we're back to here. I can now do a git pull. No, git fetch get check out uh testing the sync I think we're on head right yeah so let's do a cargo uh run
give it the best chance that it could possibly have to have this this work in a very nice way. Compiling on a Raspberry Pi, like I've gotten so used to compiling on this desktop, it's so much nicer on the um, the desktop. The Raspberry Pi is just so slow in comparison. And I was looking at um, uh, last night. I was looking at the specs for Raspberry Pis um, and the the most recent ones that have uh, that have come out, and they're so much like uh, they're like double. Like it's eight cores instead of four. It's like it, it's almost a viable computer now. Have you tried cross? Is that a different? Is that like a Raspberry Pi alternative? Let me, let me Google that. Oh, wait, is it happening? It's happening. OK, that's more odd. So this is this is strange feeling. Uh, what do I need to do? Okay, let's let's also like take a look at what our um, what's going on here. Let's see what's pegging it. We're at 99% usage now. We've we turned on VSync and somehow we're up by four percentage points. Okay, it's dropping down a little bit, but still, that's 100% usage. Wait, am I like somehow running the game twice? I, oh, 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 that would, that would do it. That that would that would be a problem. Um, okay, let's uh, let's not run the game twice as our as our baseline test. Um, all right, so let's try this again. Thank you, Utsby. Google Rust Cross. Okay, I'll I'll take a look at that in a second. Oh, well, this is much more smooth. Um, I mean, I'm pleasantly surprised it was able to run two instances at the same time. We're still running into... Like 95% usage. And this is with this is with VSync on. Uh, so nope, wrong mouse. Um, can I Let's see? The, uh, the config.json. We might be able to play around with this a little bit. So, let's 
So let's see. Our sprite shape animation speed. Um, we can maybe drop this down a little bit. We can make this like three. It's possible that VSync isn't working. It's not the most reliable of settings in many circumstances. I mean, yeah, that's also that's also possible. Our left moves, so D-pad left is not working for us. D-pad right is working. So um, I don't know if it's just the controller is broken or or it's something else. Not really sure what else we could change in our settings. Oh, we could reduce our player run speed too, maybe. I mean, so it's smoother, but... That's still not not great. We can put on we can put on a feature. Okay, let let's verify that like the VSync setting is is on for this uh and it's possible that vsync was already on because vsync by default is true and i hadn't specifically told it to turn off so vsync probably has already been on the entire time So I'm I'm not exactly sure what what to do in this this case. I don't necessarily want to upgrade like I mean I could like the easy answer would be buy the Raspberry Pi 4. <laughs> then double double everything and hopefully that should work better. But as you were saying the um the Raspberry Pi 3 should be able to run this just fine. I guess I'm, I'm not sure what, what I want to try next. Um, we'll have to figure out what like our D-pad left and right need to be. Uh, I think for, for testing that, like we'll need to um, put, some, put some logging in place so that whenever we click the button, I can actually see what the button was clicked uh, because this controller is not the same as the one I have here. Now, that being said, let me try. Taking out you and plugging in you. And we'll try this controller. Yeah, okay, this one I can run left and right. All right, so uh, that's probably just, not gonna lie, looks like Atari like this, um, like playing so slowly. I, I guess so. It's been forever since I played those Atari games. I, I guess they are really slow, like the low FPS. Can you lower the resolution? Yes, actually, that that might be a really good good idea. Uh, we can lower lower the resolution. So if I just go and do that manually here, um, now that will screw everything up because I think we're 
everything was based upon that single resolution being set. Um, it's a feature uh, sets a VI uh, the comp. Oh, I have to remember my my keyboard is not the same here. Resolution X. So we're at 1920 by 1080. That's not even a, the resolution that the Pi is, is supporting. Um, what if I tried like 800 by 600? Everything's going to be absolutely terrible with this, but we're going to try it anyways. Because we hard coded um, all of the. Oh, wait, this controller's not even plugged in anymore. That's 4.3, so it'll be stretched. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to figure out what we want to do. Uh, he has a, a large screen. If I move right. I don't even see the player. The player's probably below the screen. So I probably want to do percentages, like place the, the player by percentages of where, where things are. And that's still working now. Um, now, that being said, we could try not being so extreme with the resolution change. Uh, so instead of 1920 by 1080. What's a what's a uh, 1900? So this project to fix resolution and pixel value is probably OK because these are in a single guaranteed hardware setup. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when I first made this. Uh, but if 1920 by 1080 isn't possible, like we can't support that. Then, and so 1920, but oh, wrong, wrong keyboard. Um, 16 uh, by nine resolutions. Okay, so. All right, looking at the Wikipedia entry for this, we could do, so here's 1920 by 1080. We can try 16, 1600 by 900. Uh, call back to last stream and not thinking about game world and pixels. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, Utsby, you, you end up being right so often. Um, but generally you have a world space that's totally detached from screen pace and you modify the camera is doing anything such as refetching assets is it doing anything such as refetching refetching assets each frame. It shouldn't be. Um, we have it load the assets into an images module. Well, let me try this first. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me make sure I didn't like write that. Am I still running the game? The Raspberry Pi feels really slow still. Okay. Oh. Because I need to actually use the real keyboard. Okay, so go down to our resolution X. Let's try 1600. Ah. Okay, undo, undo, 
undo, undo, undo, undo. What? Okay. Try you again. Change word. 1600. Escape. By 900. Twelve eighty by seven twenty. Oh, that's okay. That's that might that might work too. Um, this is not not as bad. So let's try try going down to twelve eighty by seven twenty. I mean, it's better. And if we go take a look at that task manager, I mean, we've dropped, we dropped three percentage points by doing that. Still like not, like not the best. Um, let's take a look at what we're doing uh, code wise. So I'll, I can answer Danny's question. Is it just that I expect it to be 60 frames per second now in the code? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. You, the, the more I think about it, I think that actually we've had VSync on this entire time. Anyway, so the way our asset, um, that was listing cargo as executable. Is that right? Um, I am using cargo run dash dash release for that too, for that test. Um, okay, so the way we're, we're loading assets is at the beginning of the game, uh, we're having in new, we're creating all of our images and we're, we're bringing those all in. And so images comes in and loads up all of our player images and then they just go, they get stored here. And then every frame when we're drawing the images out in, for example, our player draw system, uh, we're passing a reference to that images struct and then we're just grabbing the a reference to the image out. So we're not having to like to re-grab that image over and over and over again. We're just using the same one over and over and over again. And it's the exact same thing for uh, for like the ground and the foliages. If we take a look at ground, uh, we're just storing our mesh the first time when we're creating it. And then on draw, we're just drawing that out to the screen. Uh, and then the only time that we redraw the meshes is for the tree trunks. Every time that we switch over to um, a new screen, we recreate that um, we recreate the trees and that causes the trees to sort of shift in their, their positions a little bit. It was listing jungle as the process name before. Did you change how you ran it? Wait, was that, was that different? I wasn't paying attention. Interesting cargo. No, I did not change how I ran it. Ah, wrong mouse. So hold on. I was running it through through this each time. Now that being said, we could go run the executable directly. Uh, so we can go into CD targets release we'll have to 
Um, LN. The config.json to here. And then we can do jungle and launch you. You could try not drawing or updating anything except the player and see how it feels. Oh, yeah, we could do that. We could try that. Doesn't feel any different. So yeah, okay. Let's let us let us try let's try re redoing some setup stuff, which is going to require us to be in just for just for how nice that will be. Let's go over here. So we already have this um uh this test for uh making sure that we're using where is it vsync true, but if we take a look at the the documentation at vsync true is the default for us. So that we actually don't need that. It's going to show it, show it for us anyways. Um, what, uh, what we're going to experiment now with is not drawing the trees. So let's come down to uh, it's going to be their main scene. Uh, so here we are drawing. Oh, no, it's actually the map. In the map, uh, we draw the bedrock, the ground, the surface. We draw all these things. So if we turn those off, um, we can draw, we can not draw the pit also. Uh, basically, we just don't. You know what? Easiest thing would be uh, to go back to the main scene. And don't draw the map. Just draw the player here. I make sure you've cleared all the processes down if it turns out your game isn't the thing using the processor after a, a load of troubleshooting it would be annoying well i think so if we run this oh we can see that jungle oh look at that 33 percent well wait a second that's just on this screen scene Hold on, that's it's definitely this. Like nothing, nothing else is running. And then when I start moving. We're hovering around 90%. So this definitely looks like the, it, it's the, um, what is it called? Definitely looks like it's our, it's our game that's taken up everything. I need a point with the correct mouse. Yeah, that was a little bit weird with the, the name change. Uh, become here, quit you. Okay, why did it call it? Why was it um, cargo one time when I ran it, and now it's jungle the next time I run it? That is, that feels strange and wrong. 
That's not a Raspberry Pi fault thing. That's probably just like cargo, not like handing over control or maybe the task manager not seeing the change. I don't know. It's kind of odd. Okay, so if I want to if I want to get our our CPU usage down, we're already got VSync on. Now I could potentially turn VSync off. I'm actually curious. What would happen if I turn VSync off? Uh, I could do that with a really quick VI here. So uh, we're in jungle. Let's VI source initialize here. Because I think, I think VSync has been on this entire time. So manu like, manually turn it on, I don't think did anything for us whatsoever. Now, the update loop is being limited to 30 frames per second, uh, regardless of what the graphics loop was. So theoretically, this should make it worse performance wise. Because you should be trying to draw, run the draw loop even more often. I'm also curious what the capture card's display rate is. Because like maybe that's causing me some like false, false problems. All right, so I'm getting screen tearing, but that's probably to be expected. Looks about the same and yeah, we're up we're up just a few percentage points. Not very much though. So it sounds like um a resolution change would uh would help out a lot. That brings us down by like to 90% CPU usage. I wonder if there's anything, I don't think I can do anything with um, threading. GGEZ doesn't make that easy. And a lot of these, um, a lot of these calculations that I'm doing are, are not really not really that that difficult, like not really take that much up. Oh, we could also we could also reduce our um, our update from like 30 frames per second down even more. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the best the best course of action for this would be besides Reducing the resolu resolution down quite a bit. Uh, so if we take a look at what our resolution list was. Uh, we could even try that. 1280 by 720.
So with 1280 by 720... So, twelve eighty by seven twenty. Now, just try not rendering a bunch of stuff like that. Oh, yeah, we could also try that too. Like maybe before we do this, we'll leave you on nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Go to you and turn off main scene. We've turned off the map. That's the only thing we're doing here. So, not showing it map. I don't see how this is a genuine performance issue related to required processing or your resolution. Your game is hardly doing anything. That That's kind of what it feels like. Um, I wonder if it's just like GGEZ or if it's something, something else. Maybe the Raspberry Pi with GGEZ, I don't know. Or the libraries that we're using. Okay, so not showing map now, push that up. Uh, we have to back to the Raspberry Pi. Let's undo. Undo what we did. All right, get full. And rerun you. And it's it's clearly not a memory problem. So like optimizing for memory, like memory usage is is not going to help out. Yes, I know all these warnings. All right. Look at that. We're nice and fast again. Uh, render. Render doc is useful for profiling though. I don't know if it runs on Pi. How are you drawing the background? I've been, so I basically had a, well, I can, I can just show you. Oh, no, no problem whatsoever. Um, also before I go over there, let's take a look at our profile here. Uh, we're at 50% now. Are you constructing your meshes every draw loop? I, I don't think I am. Um, based upon, let's see here. So, so here's in a map. In the map, we're just telling the bedrock to draw. And so if we go take a look at each one of these, so bedrock draw, for example, um, all that is doing Wait a second, this game object, hold on. Bedrock draw. Bedrock draw. 
uh, all it's doing is it's taking a, a reference to the mesh and the mesh is being created once whenever uh, at load time and in the in the map at update that's new we don't even have an update for map so it's not even running like uh, something new every um every frame so in a main library our update when we're in the main scene we tell the main scene to update okay so we go to main scene we look at updates uh we tell the player to update um if the player is off screen to the right we tell the map to move to the right uh if the main screen is off the player to the left we tell the map to move left and that's it and then we also tell the player to draw and then we would tell the map to draw And map.draw, as we see, is just telling all these individual ones to draw. And I guess that might be our problem here. So I guess one question is, should I replace all of those meshes that I'm drawing with just an image. I know six to seven mistrash shouldn't be a crazy amount. It shouldn't. You're you're right about that. And I'm not even cloning the meshes. I'm just drawing the mesh that's been saved out to screen. Now, I suppose what I could do is I could take that entire base, like the base level, and I can turn it into an image. Maybe we can even draw it in a sprite. Uh, then the only thing I could draw a tree, like a single tree branch, and we can put that as an image and then we can just replicate that out. Um, you know what, let's, let me try limiting the number of, now you need to check things like how often you're hitting the draw loop before heading into that sort of optimization. Um, yeah, so I wonder what's the best way for me to test that. Okay, so if I do in our main library here, this is bugging you now since GG shouldn't be this slow. I know it's never, well, I've never run it on, on a Raspberry Pi. So this is, the, the Raspberry Pi is brand new for me. Okay, so let's let's add a little bit of game state in here. Uh, if we store in our, um, I don't know if I like, well, I'm curious now. If we store in, like we're, we're, we're setting our update loop to 30 frames per second for draw. Um, just here, if I do a print line of Do like FPS. Timer. FPS context. So if I run this locally. Uh, we can see here our frames per second is is around 60 
And that's because we have this um, VSync is, is true. If I turn this off and we re we rerun this, we're at like 230 or so. So that is the number of, okay, so this, this is gonna be the number of um, update loops, like the, the draw loops that is happening. Okay. Now, so I don't get like, this is not crazy. Let's try setting you back to true. Let's do um, if timer Okay, if timer ticks context, and that's a U size, get the number of times the game has gone through its event loop. Okay, so if that mod every 10, every every 30 maybe, every 30, uh, if that's equal to zero, yeah, but if you said VSync is not often reliable, okay, so that, that's true. That, that's very true. Um, okay, so if that mod zero, then we'll print this out. So then this should run significantly slower and not like just... Yeah, so every 30 frames, every 30 times through the loop, we get this, this uh, frame per second out. And okay, so let's let's try this over there and see what our frames per second are are is. And it's not 30 frames, it's 30 ticks. Okay, so got you. Back to Raspberry Pi. Oh, is that only 50% CPU usage? Yes, 50% CPU usage without drawing any of the background. And then maybe maybe we should like change that from only 50% usage to it's using 50% usage by only drawing the player. Maybe it is recreating the GPU memory texture each cell. So that's our, our redraw. Okay, so here's our, we're running through here. If we come back over and take a look here. Oh, look at that. Um, Uspi, you're correct. Our frames per second is really, really high. You assume you're, um, yeah, this is the frames per second. So every 30 ticks, it prints this out. At our, this is the average frames per second over the last 200 frames or the last 200 ticks, 200 frames. And 
this is really high. So either my V-Sync is like e either my display thinks it's like 200. Is there a way for me to verify what the V-Sync thinks that it is? I just told my um, my capture card to explicitly be capture at 60 frames per second. So if I Yeah, and, uh, uh, well, little, little kids box. I don't know. I don't know how to. Pro I can't pronounce your name. Um, I am. I am building with all the optimizations on. Yeah. So I, I think that we may have to manually manage our frames per second on the draw loop. Because this is, this is not, this is not working for us. Huh. Interesting. Oh, Ice Foxen. Oh, it's awesome to have you here. Nice to nice to virtually meet you. I I love GGEZ. Thank you so much for making it. Um, okay, so VSync isn't working. I think hmm. What do I want? What do I need to do? Um, obviously, changing things like resolution is is not really going to help out very much. But maybe I can. Maybe I can. I think so tell me tell me what you think about this if I do a manual game loop like uh, the the override the, the game loop instead of using just the the game loop that's provided for us uh, we can do a sleep in there and maybe try to limit ourselves to 50 frames per second or so can you remove the rectangle and circle draws to absolutely yes I can um, you see, VSync in order by libraries, drivers, whatever, and things like Intel onboard graphics, so it's not unusual. Yeah, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to implement our own. Can you remove the rectangle and circle draws too? Absolutely, yes. Let's do that. So we are where are we doing those? I think that's in the player draw system. Here is our. Rectangle and our center dot. So if we take you out, I of course need to plug in a controller into this system if I want to, you know, obviously run the game here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. Hmm. 
Now, as a real... As a real basic... By default, GGZ requests VSync to be on. And I saw that, I saw that uh, in the documentation. But whether or not it actually does anything is up to the OS and the GPU driver. Yeah. Um, that looks a lot better to you. Oh, that is because we are creating that mesh every single time. I forgot, like, that debug mesh is being created every single frame. Um, let's go ahead and get this pushed out. So, turned off the debug um, player border drawing. Push you off. All right, back to Raspberry Pi. Yeah, no, that was the, uh, that was, that was not the Raspberry Pi. I would expect that no matter what I put on it on the desktop, it's going to be perfectly fine there. And I need to replug the controller back into here. Ah. I need like a tripod for this this other display or this other camera. Or maybe just turn it off because I don't think it's actually doing anything for us. There. All right. Let's see if this helps out. Okay. That looks pretty good. We're at 160 or so. And we're at like 48%. Um, you have to head out for a couple hours though, unfortunately. Uh, good luck. Just remove meshes from the background one by one and see what happens. Um, thank you so much, Icefox, uh, for, for stopping by and uh, also, like, thank you for the help with this. I have the backgrounds back now and the debugging, that the debug meshes are gone. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good idea. And... I can do that uh, here. Can I do that here? No, it's going to be easier for me to do that over here. So in our main scene, we're going to turn our map back on. But we're going to go into the map and turn off the draw for all these. Um, and then that way I'll be able to come in and, uh, just turn these back on one at a time on the other side. Um, and then we'll, we'll see how, how this goes. All right. So stage you, all right, um, turning. Now going to try turning each background mesh back on one at a time.
Okay, get pulling this. Let's go ahead. Let's let's get this going. Um, first is the baseline. Um, we'll just run this again. Make sure that everything is still looking just fine. Man, setting up an auto deployment for getting like the binaries out will be really helpful in like speeding up this testing aspect because it won't have to recompile on the Raspberry Pi. I could recompile maybe in like a GitHub action, put that onto S3, and then pull that down here. Okay, so that's still looking good. And we saw that we were getting, yeah, we we're getting those high FPSs, but that's that's to be expected. Now let's, um, let's one by one bring these in. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna VI source um, map. And in view, gonna turn these on one at a time. Uh, this is barking up the wrong tree a bit. The problem is that the draw loop is unlimited. Reducing what you do in the loops here, GPU and not CPU limited, isn't really solving it. Yeah. I think I agree with you also, Usby. I am curious at which point it like fails though. That being said, like it might just be a, a curiosity that doesn't need to be need to be resolved. So looking at the documentation there there is documentation for creating our own uh creating our own loop and if we take a look at i want to say it's the event When we call event loop run, so that's under the context creator, I think. Context builder that I think creates the events loop. And the events loop has run forever. What are we actually doing here? In the meantime, I'm going to set this up with studio mode so I can look over in a side and actually see when this each time this runs and test it out really quickly. Yeah, that's still that's still fine. I wonder if it's the trees because there's like a whole bunch of the trees that are being rendered. But yeah, I think I think you're right, USB. I think the best thing for us to do would be to sleep. And you know what? We can do a really crazy version of that now. If I, this isn't this isn't the best idea, but in the main library, I can put a sleep at the end of the draw loop. Now the problem is I need to figure out like how much to sleep by, and that's like that's maybe a little bit. 
tougher of a, a decision. But I could do a, um, let's see, what is it? Um, thread. Standard thread sleep duration from millisecond. Now, how many milliseconds do I want to sleep? I don't know. Like, even if I sleep, I don't know, because I want this to be dynamic. I need to, like, figure out how long it's taken us. Um, and then like recalculate, like recalculate how long we need to sleep and then, and then sleep that amount. That being said, if I just choose something like, I don't know, 100 milliseconds, that seems a lot. Yeah, that's getting us eight frames per second on average now. Looks familiar. Uh, so that that might be a little bit too much um, to sleep here. Just check if you've hit the next frame time and yield if not. Uh, so let me see. I want. I don't think the delta helps me here. Check if you hit the next frame time and yield if not. So at the beginning. So we have how much time? Um, we have 16 milliseconds, so we have approximately 30 milliseconds per frame if we want to hit 30, 30 frames per second. Uh, accidentally killed my this window instead of... If I, at the beginning of the frame, so at update, I think it runs update and then check update time. That's what I'm doing here. I could, okay, I could try running check update time here as well. Yeah, we can just do 30 to begin with. Let's just try doing everything in here. Um, we need to be question mark that. No sleep anymore. And return it okay. All right, it's happy. All right, so that definitely does not like that. Uh, let's try to make sure our graphics bring this outside. Up here.
Yeah, so check check update time. I can't do that. In the draw loop. Because it hasn't updated again. It's always false. It's always false. That's only something I can do here. Uh, there is a... There is a timer. So like average delta, delta... Remaining update time. Returns the fractional amount of a frame not consumed by check update time. For example, if the desired update frame time is 40 milliseconds and 45 milliseconds have passed since the last frame, check update time will turn true and remaining update time will be returned 5 milliseconds, the amount of time overflowing from one frame to the next. So I can get this to get the time milliseconds. Maybe I can sleep that time. Okay. Let's let's try that. So we'll remove this from a while loop. And let's try. Uh, I think that's milliseconds. So let's do a timer. Oh, it's um. Standard threat sleep duration from milliseconds timer remaining update time context and this returns milliseconds. Your turn. Oh, you already return a, a duration. Okay, never mind. So. That's limited us quite a bit down to like 44 frames per second. Uh, if I go back to initialize and we turn VSync off, exactly the same there okay and exactly the same frames per second there okay so this this might do something for us let's and we had the that was the full map on too right i, I actually wasn't paying attention that is okay we're we gonna see that too so let's take this and push that up So, limiting FPS um, in the draw loop. Push you. Wait a second, add local changes. Uh, get, check out, dash dot, get pull. Okay, now let's do this. Now let's see if we can have the map and eat it too.
I'm glad you think I glad you think that joke is funny, Chantilly. You're probably the only one. All right, here we go. All right, so we're moving we're moving faster along. And if we take a look at Look at those frames per second though. We're not hitting our 30 frames per second target. We're getting 8 Hmm, that's a that's a problem. So before, oh, what's CPU load? Good question. Let's go take a look. We're still at eighty percent CPU load. So is our problem in the update loop? Maybe getting the new Pi would, would solve this? I don't know. It, it might, but... So we're getting seven frames per second. I know seven frames per second. That's that's fun. My my attempt to my attempt to sleep, I think, is is wrong. Uh, so if we take a look here, uh, what I'm doing is inside of our, our draw loop, I'm sleeping at the end here and I'm sleeping for the remaining update time. Oh, we've said we want you to be 30 frames per second. So let's say I change you to 60 frames per second. And push. Uthby, you've got to go. Uh, you may grab your code and try it on your Pi 2 tomorrow. It has to be solvable. Um, the Pi can run Pitfall emulated full screen. Um, I mean, yeah, where, where, where the, uh, my, my new, like the modern, the modern code can't beat an Atari at performance. Might as well just switch over to programming on that directly. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. So did I push you up? I did push you up. Um, but thank you so much for Utsby for all the help. Uh, this has been this has been great. Um, we're slowly we're slowly figuring out what we need to do here. And I may I may have to go soon too for lunch. It's been it's it's almost one o'clock. Oh no, it's not almost one o'clock. It's twelve thirty.
the fun the fun wait while everything compiles. All right, here we go. Okay, look at that. Moving moving nice and fast through here. We're getting Terrible frames per second still, though. Eight frames per second. Seventeen frames per second is in the playable range, but yeah, not not ideal. Uh, and I'm not in, I'm very solidly not in the 17 frames per second range right now. Um, and CPU wise, we're still on 89%. So he might consider running Valgrind and generate a profile to look at where the time is going. That's a, that's a good idea. I haven't run Valgrind uh, before. Let's see if we can get that running locally. What do I need for Valgrind? Is that, um, is that a command line? Something I can install? Uh, let's see, Valgrind. It is a command line thing. Okay, so I'll need to look into Valgrind for Windows. There is a GUI viewer for the profile that is nice. Oh, definitely find directions for getting it to work with Rust C. And I would probably want, I would probably, it, it would make more sense for me to get this working on Linux for the Raspberry Pi and get it running on the Raspberry Pi so I can see there. Uh, okay, so, okay, Valkyrie GUIs. Yeah, I, I'm, we may we may take a look at this later. The other potential thing, use Valgrind in your ray tracer years ago and it helped immensely with optimizes. Oh, nice. Okay. Did you write ray tracer in Rust? Oh, Valgrind doesn't work on Windows anyways. Okay, never mind. Then I don't I don't really care about it here then. Fine. Um Oh yeah, I'm just seeing like Linux, 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 Android, Solaris, Mac. Okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna run this on a Mac or a Linux machine. Yeah, that was in Rust. Nice. Uh, okay. So other things that we can do is we could actually truly limit. We could write our own event loop, like write our own. Um, a uh, loop, which if we go and take a look at here, I think Visual Studio does the profiling on Windows. Never used it. I've yeah, I've not I've not set up any of the debugging profiling stuff in here. I, I'm sure it could do pretty good. Uh, if we go to main, here we have event run. If we take a look at that, this is. Run the game main loop calling event callbacks on the given state. Oh, Visual Studio, not Visual Studio Code. I do have Visual Studio installed. We could try it there. So we could write our own event loop in here. Because here's our state update and state.draw. And so right 
here, for example, we could sleep for time. So if we If we create a instant, something you can also try if you run update but not draw or draw but not update, do you have a massive performance hit? Oh yeah, we could just comment out. Uh, you can comment out one of these, for example. If we sleep for for questionable amount of time there, so I think what we'd have to do is like at the top of here, we would have to get like the instant of now. So like basically that now equals standard duration instant now. Wow, you're not helpful. Um, I guess I guess Rust Analyzer isn't going to help me at all inside when I'm inside of uh, another package's code. So if we get now, which is an instant, and we have a duration. We get another instant and we subtract them. I think that gives us a duration. And that would tell us, okay, so this would become like begin. Uh, we After a run our, our draw, we have let end equals standard Duration instant now. Then I subtract them, subtract end from start. Uh, so that, um, like the, the frame length equals, I guess this is going to be delta. No, frame length equals end minus start. That's what I called it, right? Oh, it's called it. It's called start. So end minus start. That should give us a duration that is frame length. And then I want to get um, If I want a duration of 30 seconds, like 30, 30 mil, 30 frames per second, that would be 30 milliseconds or so. So, uh, subtract 30 milliseconds from this. So let sleep time equals duration, excuse me, standard duration from sex thirty. Oh, from from milliseconds. Oh. Thirty. Then oh, then this is gonna be minus frame length 
And then only if... Um, if frame length is greater than zero... I don't, I don't know if I can do that calculation or not. If frame length is greater than zero, then I want to sleep by that amount of time. We could just, for this, this case, we could just try a um, standard thread sleep uh, by the sleep time. So if I run this, what's the chance of this even working? Uh, then I'm not actually going to be doing that at all. I'm not going to be sleeping here at all. We, we should be around 30 frames per second. Uh, now, what's the chance of this working without airing out because I just did all that? Okay, apparently that's really fast. My frames per second isn't being limited whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm thinking maybe essentially bringing out and doing that loop ourselves, though, might might help out a lot. Uh, that being said, I'm going to have to play around with this later uh, because I need to go grab lunch. So um, everyone, thank you so much for uh, stopping by. Uh, I know Ice Fox and you're no longer here anymore, but uh, uh, and Uspi, you're, you're gone too. Danny, thank you everybody for all the help. Um, that you gave, uh, I think we've, we've improved it, um, maybe just a teeny tiny bit, uh, but we've got a lot more information, which I think is a lot more helpful. And I think, I think that's going to allow us to, to maybe figure what, what's going on out, uh, without necessarily just throwing more hardware at it by buying a bigger Raspberry Pi. Um, install VS Code on Raspberry Pi. I mean, I could. Now, the other thing is I could try, I, I actually have a different operating system I could try and see whether or not that works too. Um, anyways, uh, I need to go get lunch and I'll, I'll think about what I want to do in the meantime. So I'm going to switch over to the ending scene. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much for stopping by and watching. Um, I have, I've been doing these streams every single weekday morning. Today was a little bit different because I had a dentist appointment. Uh, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so I don't actually know if I'm going to stream in the morning or during the day at all. Um, uh, so pay, like, if you follow me here on Twitch or you follow me on Twitter, then you'll get the notifications for when I do uh, go live. Um, and, uh, that way, if I do stream, you'll, you'll catch it and then you'll see what, what, uh, like, maybe we'll figure out the, the resolution for this, uh, or maybe at least we'll like continue working on it. Uh, if I don't stream, uh, tomorrow, I will be definitely back on Friday morning at 7 a.m. Mountain time, uh, which is, I think like GMT six minus six or seven. Uh, and then we stream like until around noon because I am on holiday. Until next Monday. Anyways, with that, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.